Um, David is here. Welcome, David. Hi, Paul. We will go clockwise and ask you to introduce yourself. Jump in. Uh, sure. Uh, my name is David Cole. I'm based in Berkeley, California. I've had the pleasure of working with the Writing Project on a bunch of technology projects and literacy projects over the years. And this conversation is just an ongoing part of that. I really appreciate the chance to be here and hear from you all about what you're doing with AI. Nick, you're our newest member here. Welcome. So my name is Nick Kuyos. I am a retired, just recently retired. I was the English department chair in a school in Westchester County, which is just outside New York City and a high achieving district. And I've had the pleasure of meeting Paul and just really fascinated about the possibilities of the whole exchange. So thankful for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Christina and Jack. <laughs> Hi, I'm Christina Cantrell. I work at the National Writing Project and have been um, working with Paul for eons now. Um, I'm Jack Marmerstein. I, I, I ride, ride along with, with Chris. Uh, not, not a teacher, but, but spent a lot of time in, in ed tech and some in psychology and things like that. Hi. Okay, Bob. Hi, Bob. Bob Montgomery. I work at West Ed, and I'm here just to learn and play with AI. Scott. Hey, I'm Scott Christensen. Um, I uh, well, Chris invited me to to join in as a parent, and I also uh, work as a secondary ELA um, education specialist in a district. So this fascinates me quite a bit. Yeah, and I am Chris Sloan. I teach uh, high school English and media at Judge Memorial in Salt Lake City, Utah. And uh, yeah, I mean, I've got some questions about tonight's topic for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, but first, though, just the human tragedy is just overwhelming. But yeah. Yeah, I, and so... Um... Jumping in on this with, you know, it's still going on and, and, and all the other feelings and so forth is interesting. But I think, I think <clears throat> were I in the classroom, I might do this with students. So I want to just say, you know, um, this is a, something I want to sort of check out with you, see how you're feeling about it, thinking. See, the, the real question is, can the thinking AI thinking partners that we've set up on now comment push our thinking, help us talk, have a conversation? Um, and I've kept the article very, very uh, chose one that's very relatively short and simple. It's from a couple of days ago, so things would have to be um, updated, of course. Um, Anybody else want to say anything about how you're feeling about or what, what were your first thoughts when you thought, oh, my gosh, we're going to deal with that and AI? How's that possible? What were your first thoughts when you heard this? <laughs> well, I'll jump in really quick because um, it actually, um, you know, aside from the suffering, um, as an English teacher, one of the things I've been interested in for a long time is how we talk about things on polarizing topics. And I cannot think of a more polarizing topic than this one right now. And I do think there is some potential with AI to help us think about um, polarizing topics, especially when we're part of the polarization. Um, you know, um, how do I try to uh, maybe use AI to help me or any learner see the other side of something that um, I might be like, you know, passionately against. So that's why I'm here. I'll throw something out here. I was kind of wondering how this would go because this is very much a hot stove issue and another tragedy and very overwhelming on every level. Um, to your point, Chris, you're, you're kind of filling in a gap in my own thinking as I was trying to grapple with this. It was that at first, my first thought as I walked around today thinking about this conversation, I was like, oh, is that we can just sort of think, treat it as a research tool? How close are we going to go? Um, but to the extent these ethical questions about morality and tragedy um, 
they are they are no debt they are obviously hard to deal with and they're hard to unpack and it's a lot for a teacher to take on um in a role as a kind of religious person almost dealing with issues that are about life and death to the extent that that could be sort of taken apart thematically or um that's an interesting proposition to use the tool to help parse some things that um are quite complex because it's challenging enough to hold a class together. Maybe it could be an assistance that way. This is my first thought. On the flip, I was thinking about, so I've got this program right out going on and people share over social media. And I've just been like trying to stay in this very thin column of Twitter to see what's happening. So I don't see anything else because Twitter's just sending me an enormous amount of distressing, you know, um, what's the word? <laughs> Inflammatory content, sort of just, just regularly, if I just look at my main feed. And so I've been sort of like narrowing myself and thinking. And so, so just, just thinking about like, what what has happened with social media and how it does this super polarizing thing is there a way to use the technology to do something different uh, i've had the same i was thinking with, we're right here but we haven't talked about this and i was thinking <laughs> but i was thinking the exact same thing um but i was thinking two things i mean i guess the thought partners that i've seen so far when based on you know 40 percent mm -hmm. attendance or something are optimized towards working with students on their writing and, and partly offering political viewpoints of the feminist uh, feminist thought partner or, or whatever, but uh, but not, not I, I, was, I found myself wondering like what would a moral thought partner be, like a, a Martin Buber thought partner, a, 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 mm -hmm. a, you know, first principle is assigning dignity to the other and, and, and the, the, and 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 managing the encounter with the other, and what I was thinking about with that, that relates to what Chris said is sort of, uh, you know, everything we see. Social media has has AIs all their own, optimized optimized algorithms, optimized to feed us inflammatory content because that's what keeps our eyeballs there and keeps us clicking. And if we literally if we literally had a had a had an AI had a thought partner that did the opposite, that 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 you know that gave you complex ambiguous content that didn't activate you, that didn't arouse you, but made you stop and think. Um, I don't know how it would do that exactly. I have a few ideas, but that would be an interesting exercise. That would be a, that would be a thought partner because that because it would make you stop and think. That is not the workshop I planned tonight, but <laughs> but yes, but absolutely thinking about a, a thinking like what if we had a Palestinian activist thought partner and an Israeli and, and then they had a dialogue yeah, I don't know but I, I love the idea of the Martin Buber but so somebody else so a really good question is what kind of thinking partner would we want to have as we read through some of this stuff right um, and can we make that for ourselves um, I that's at least let's we're gonna bracket that question um, but get back to it, I think. Bob, did you want to add anything or? Are you... uh, yeah, I don't have any preconceived notions. I, I'm, cool. I'm just, just curious to see what what happens when we start to play with this issue and the tool at hand. OK, so, oh, go ahead, Scott. One, one last thing. thing. Yeah, cool. yeah I could throw in. Um, we I've been I've been doing some work. We started it last year uh nationally with the news literacy project and um we did something um we used a text called digital detectives which was pretty cool to kind of like look at the way we do we look at our media and uh and it was enough of a a, a difference i think um but one of the things that really stood out to me was when something uh gets you impassioned that's a good time to step back and really think about it and so i in my head, as I saw these topics, I was like, okay, well, I'm, I know I'm feeling pretty impassioned, you know, but like, it's a good time to step back and be like, 
you know, how, what's at play as far as the media, as far as the social media or whomever is, um, you know, giving you the news that you're getting. So. Cool. cool. So, um, it's somebody wanted, I, I didn't see who that was. Somebody wanted to add one more thing. Go well, I, think so. I, I was just picking up on what Christina had mentioned and same with you, Scott, which is, you know, I guess this is implicit with every learning partner one creates, but, um, going off and creating a Palestinian and a Knesset members, you know, say you want to get a right wing Orthodox position and a Palestinian position. I mean, it, it immediately raises the question of what, what does, what has this been trained on? Where's that information coming from? And it creates its own interesting spectacle, which we see laid out in headlines right and left. And to Christina's point, you know, it's hard to know what you're getting curated. Not that it really matters exactly. I don't know the free fine grainness of the AI that, the AI mojo is pulling from, but it certainly makes that point about where the information is coming from around polarizing issues. It becomes very explicit as a as a as a subject to the material that these things are trained on. It'll be interesting to see what level of trust we feel at the end of this process for uh, the voices we we are exposed to. <clears throat> yeah, it's just you. Yeah. All right, so uh, let's jump in if we can. Um, and um, I have I have designed, you know, where the, over over the time we've designed. And in this room here, there are seven tables around. And in the bottom left corner is the the link to the Malik and Malik document that that I've used to kind of organize. Um, what we're going to do here tonight. Um, and so I, I just want to, and we haven't done this in a, in this kind of organized way. Um, but so let me try to do this. Um, what I want to check, check though, is if I go to this, does that share with anybody? Do you see AI as a tool? I'm not seeing anything. Okay. Good to know. So if you go up to table one, up to the left, just beyond Chris, you can click on the um, image there. <clears throat> and I'll share my screen. How about that? And we'll figure this out. OK, so this is the article, right? And um, so there are Malik and Malik have described seven, and Chris, you did some work with this this summer with your mm -hmm. students, but there, there are seven ways of asking AI, they call it as, assigning AI, it's the name of the article. There are seven ways. First one is tool, right? And um, if, you, if you can go over and make that larger or something, you can see that um, these, these categories overlap each other. We're still figuring them out and so forth, but let me just read what this one says. So we are learning together how to how to use AI as a tool to extend our thinking, right? It can translate, adapt, and transform text, right? And then you can read more what Malik and Malik say about that. So the thinking partners that fit that tool are a translator. Um, there's a breaking down tool that... Um, that we we worked with figurative language. You can make images. You can do level adaptation. So those are the kinds of tools that we're talking about here. Um, and then, well, uh, just to be really yeah. explicit, these are the tools Please, that have been developed over time and now comment. And you just you made that list. You were like, oh, I think these match these extending performance. Thank you for explaining that. Yes, okay. exactly okay. right. So when Malik and Malik came out with their seven categories, I started thinking, oh my gosh, this helps us organize this mess of, um, mess of yeah, that we have, right? So, so one of the tools, and I've just clicked on, and I think I'm showing, right? Yes. So I'm jumping kind of quickly, but this is looking at the entire article here on the left side. Um, not it doesn't consider the videos, unfortunately, not yet. Yeah. But um, one of the tools beyond the ones I just listed there is to sift. I'm not going to slow down to 
but you'll see what it says. So I want to ask volunteers to read tonight, so it's not my voice so much. Um, for the entire article, I just asked it, how reliable is this source? In the little box, um, the optional box, I right-clicked on the title here and, and got the URL, the New York Times URL, and AI did this. Would somebody read uh, the stop there for us? Sure. Um, yeah. And this is Mike Caulfield's SIFT stuff, right? Yes, exactly. I mean, as we read it, you'll kind of get an idea of what, yeah, it explains sure. itself. Yeah. Go okay. Ahead. So how reliable is this source? First stop. The source is an article from the New York Times, a well-established and internationally recognized news outlet. I is for investigate the source. The New York Times is known to be a reputable, reputable and reliable source for news. It's been in operation since 1851 and has won numerous Pulitzer Prizes. The authors of the article, Andre Martinez and Emma Babola, are both experienced journalists. Martinez is a senior editor for the Times in Seoul, South Korea, and has an impressive background, having worked at the Wall Street Journal and Bloomberg News. Emma Babola is a reporter based in London. F is for find better coverage. A search for similar events described in the article can be found on other reputable news sources such as BBC, The Guardian, and The Washington Post. These sources also cover the context and consequences of the attacks, supporting the credibility of the claims made in the New York Times article. And T is for trace claims, quotes, and media back to the original context. The article contains several hyperlinks leading to other related articles and sources. The information provided in these linked resources supports the claims made in the article, adding to its credibility. Summary. Based on the SIF method, the New York Times article appears to be a reliable source of information. The information contained in the article is well-sourced and verifiable. The authors are experienced and credible, and the same information can be found in other reliable media outlets. No red flags or credibility issues were identified in this analysis. The source can likely be trusted for accurate information regarding the events described. Okay, I'll jump in and say that was all made up. Okay, on some level, it was all made up, right, by AI. Any thoughts? Or, but but it was created in you know, 15, 20 seconds, um, right? Um, and Mike Caulfield has said that one of the reasons he does this, uh, you know, one of his motivators is because all the other methods that are used for finding about reliability of a source get so complicated that kids don't use it. So it is my thought that using an AI thinking partner like this could give students a very quick sense of whether or not the article they're reading is reliable. Any reactions to all of that or thoughts? I just want to try it with what I think is a junkie article and see what it Yeah, comes that would be. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> idea, Christina. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be great to, yeah, let's be curious. Maybe you can share your screen. We can see your junkie article. I'd have to find one. <laughs> he'll so he'll find one while we're looking. So I, I would love, I, 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 we could absolutely slow down and we, we probably should, but I do want to kind of get through all seven so you get a sense of the big picture and then go back and see and, and ask good questions like that. Does that, does that sound okay to do? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm, I think I can just scroll mm -hmm. and say that the, yes, this is, so there are three of them that are kind of hard to distinguish. And I'll give you <laughs> the benefit of my confusion here, right? Um, they talk about using AI as a mentor, using AI as a tutor, and using AI as a coach. And if I, we can just dis, <laughs> disambiguate, yes, that's the word. The three of those, I think it's helpful. So mentors giving you feedback, um, it, it makes most sense for you as a writer, but it also can give you feedback as, as a reader. Um, tutors teach you something, like here's some information you need. And then a coach helps you think metacognitively about your work. 
Fair enough. Should we? Uh, can I get another volunteer to? I, does it make sense to read these aloud, or you want to read them quietly? I'm not sure which. I, I, in the interest of time, Paul, I think because yeah. we only we've got 25 minutes down. Yeah. I think okay. we do a quick maybe out read like the first line or something, and okay, and the whole text. Do you want to do that, Bob? <laughs> All right. Let me make sure. Are we on the uh, the mentor? Right. Okay. Yes. I'll take, I'll take a stab at the mentor. Okay. So, so this. This is text to self mentor, adding meaningful details about yourself to the note of Paul's edits. Okay. And and by the way, my question was, I don't know what to think of any of this. Okay. And that's a reference. So what, what went to OpenAI, just to remind us all again, is the entire article, my question. And then there was another box where I filled in something to the effect of, you know, I always kind of think the Palestinians are an honest, reflection are being oppressed, but then I kind of see what's going on with Israel here too. And so, so you, some, some, I described my own feelings. Which right? which fulfills the role of this thinking partner, which is to give feedback on on something you've done. Is that right? That's right. So you've, you've, you've created- Give feedback on who I am. Yeah, help, help yeah. me connect the article to who I am. Can I or, ask? So oh, yeah, please. Yeah. How much of the article is it looking at? It's looking at the entire article in this case. Oh, okay. Okay. Yep. So, so this is giving feedback to your summary slash analysis of what the article says. No, it's giving feedback to the whole article. But the purpose of this thinking partner is to give feedback to you. That's right. So it would be giving feedback to what you've written not what the article says unless what you've written is it does both but the whole article and, and the whole article my question and my description of my thinking goes to a open ai and it comes back with this description my understanding of the thinking partner is it really it 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 annotates and is seeking to look at your writing literally phrase grammar word choice like at that technical level but oh, let's see what happens mm -hmm. but that's my understanding of that particular role as defined in the in the text I've read. Okay. Yeah. All right, so I'll, I'll hit the high notes. Okay. So Thanks. this is referring to you. As someone who sympathizes with the plight of the Palestinians, it's important for you to understand the context and reasons behind the conflict described in the article. Next paragraph. The article describes a large-scale attack by Palestinian militants. Da, 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 da. This article quotes this. The attack was described as this. This final sentence, this aspect of the conflict might be challenging for you due to your inclination to see Palestinians as oppressed. Because that, that's, mm -hmm. this is interesting because I don't know if I see this as a feedback role, but it's a form of, yeah, it's a form of feedback. Okay, uh, next <laughs> paragraph, um, Hamas leader justified the attack by saying this, this said in the article, final sentence, this is the payoff, each final sentence. This could prompt you to reflect on the root causes of the conflict and the frustrations Palestinians might feel under their current conditions. So they're basically, the partner is reacting to what you've written in light of what the article says. Mm -hmm. Next paragraph, however, remember that the story also highlights the high number of deaths and great damages caused by these attacks, including the destruction of buildings and the death of a thousand people. One might argue that this loss of life and property could potentially perpetuate the cycle of aggression and retaliation. Finally, I want to encourage you to revisit the text with these perspectives in mind, especially look at the justifications for the attack given by Hamas and the responses from Israel. Do they align with your previous understandings of the conflict? In understanding such a complicated issue, it is fundamental to keep an open mind and critically interrogate the views and actions of all involved parties. So it would really be helpful to, to know what you wrote, Paul. Um, but anyway, we can kind of guess what you wrote. Yeah, it, it's uh, good. It was, it was something simply that I, I, I tend to um, think that the Palestinians are being oppressed, but I also understand that Israel needs to feel safe. It was an attempt to see both sides. Got right? it. Yeah. But it was short. It was like three sentences. Right? Yeah. Um, thoughts, questions, ideas? Move on? Feedback? Thoughts? Yeah. Let's keep going. I'd like to see how it relates. Yeah. Do you mind? Especially the, the, the one about coaching. 
because this feels a lot like the coaching to me, but well, let's see what, what we get to. So Chris, I think, Chris Sloan, you created the news hound, I think, by the way. Yeah, just someone who's uh, deep into the news and is always, the kid who shows up and knows, you know, the headlines maybe before even you do. So, uh, uh, yeah, so uh, could we get another, Bob, you did a great job of summarizing and helping us through. Somebody else want to try to do that with this one? The news hound. Sure. What do I need to know to understand the current situation? The situation between Israel and Palestine is complex and it's possible to fully understand without historical context. One key point in this historical conflict is the creation of Israel post-World War II, which led to the displacement of numerous Palestinians, an event they referred to as Napka or the catastrophe. On the other hand, Palestinians feel oppressed due to factors like displacement from their homes, limitations on their movement, um, practices that could Critics have likened to apartheid. They desire autonomy and recognition as a separate state. On the other hand, Israel was established as a homeland for Jews post-Holocaust. They point to the security cameras as the reason behind their actions, saying it's necessary to prevent attacks. Rocket attacks from Hamas, a Palestinian Islamic organization considered a terrorist group by many countries, including Israel and the United States, fuels Israel's cause. The situation is made more complex by various regional and international political interests. For instance, Egypt and Jordan are the only Arab countries that officially recognize Israel. In the global arena, the United States is a key ally, while many other countries support the Palestinian cause. The United, United Nations has tried mediating the conflict to varying degrees of success. Understanding the situation requires careful navigation of media bias and a comprehension of both historical events and concrete contemporary political climate. It's certainly a difficult task, but your habit of relating contemporary events to similar historical events will greatly add your, your understanding. Always consider multiple perspectives when forming your opinion. So I guess the question is, are, are you feeling the difference between tutor and mentor between yeah. these two? Not, not at all. Not me. You're not at all, really? No. No. Okay. No, and there's there's so much there's so much retelling of the there's so much content here. This is my issue, kind of with all of this. Is like cutting to the chase and 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 trying not to, you know, make me consume. I mean, I know one of the roles is didactic. It is. It is. It. But yeah, I'm not it's trying to teach you something here. I, yeah. You know, a lot of that content in here, though, interestingly, is not in the article. Hmm. Worth noting, I think. I did think this one, Bob, was more interesting than the other one. Like this one. This one wasn't personal. It only got personal at the end. So for me, I liked the previous one because it, it, I was in it well, every paragraph hmm. as, the, as the author versus a history lesson. Right. His fair. lesson is less interesting. I think it's it. This is about me getting seeing myself and leaning in because this is really helping me think versus understand what I can read in a in a online in any any place. To be fair, I chose one of of the mentors and one of the tutors. Right, mm -hmm. there, there could be others, um, yeah. and and maybe they distinguish differently, but just just to put that out there as a, a fair thought that moving on though, I think I, I get that feeling that we should do that. Um, here's the coach, right? Um, I chose the one that, that is take this text and find a burning question that I can use um, that is in search of a solution, right? Should, should we just take a minute and read that quietly to ourselves and then comment on it? Sure. Okay. You'll see my question is, how might I start researching this?
Do I jump in? Can we do this? Uh, thoughts, questions, what did you see there? I, I will say this. Uh, I, I mean, you know, if we slow down and show the prompt um, in detail, all of this would take so long. But um, the prompt was, and again, Chris, you and I, I think, made this one together. It, it points, it, you can use this with your own writing or with the text you're reading, in this case, the text you're reading. It looks for a burning question in the text, and then it begins, it, it, it looks for two questions, and then it begins to suggest a solutions-based kind of inquiry that you might want to take. And just as an aside, yeah. um, you know, mm -hmm. we're doing inquiry writing, um, explicitly doing inquiry writing with my seniors right now, and, and part of it is like question generation is not always easy for people like to generate questions you'd think that they want to spend time with. And so this at least is kind of unpacking the thinking of inquiry. So the, I just did a quick search and cycle of violence is not in the article itself. So AI generated that question. Mm -hmm. It did. Hmm. All right. This is and we're, we're did, whipping through this, but yeah. Where did pollution story tracker come from? Was that one of the possible tools to suggest that you build it in? Is, yeah, we we gave it that. We asked it to point the student to the solution story tracker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just thinking about these as student as a student, I'm like, oh wow, these are interesting. Hmm. Like if you didn't really know that much. Like, I could have used this in college really badly. <laughs> um, again, we're whipping through these and then we'll, and then we'll so that we have some time to actually play and, and do a little bit more ourselves and, or, and our talk. But uh, I think, Crystal, you mentioned at the beginning um, something about getting another point of view. Mm -hmm. And I'll warn you ahead of time given some, an issue that's so polarizing. As, as people pointed out at the beginning, getting another point of view on this is really pretty complex. But can we ask you, somebody, to read through this a little bit, or should we just read silently again? Don't know what to do here. Does it help to read through? Not, not this length no. of text for me. OK, so, so go ahead. We'll give some time just to read that. Paul, can you scroll down slightly? Because I can't see your question. Thanks. Oh, yeah. Um, and I'm sorry. And I need to think again. Sorry. I'm losing I'm losing the thread a little bit here, but I, I can I can remember it if I just go back for a second on my screen. So okay. So this is using AI as a teammate, okay? Um, and and I, when I first saw, saw, saw these categories, I was like, oh, they all blended, you know. But as we start playing with them, I do think they do make some sense, just to say, just to make that case a little bit. Um, but a teammate, you want to imagine, is somebody you're doing a research project with, right? It's a group of people doing this. And this AI is helping, is adding into your team's thoughts. All right, reading time.
right. You're all really game here tonight. I appreciate it. Um, any thoughts about this? Beyond, I, I mean, yeah, whatever. Any thoughts about this? All right, I'm new, but I'll jump in. Good, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I'm trying to keep it. How you doing, Nick? <laughs> I'm doing well. I'm just trying to keep okay, an observational good. distance. And but, but I did mm -hmm. find this. I, I actually found this very compelling because I thought that the suggestion was that you had to make your own delineation between the different viewpoints, and I think it proposed a balanced approach to both of those, which. I think would challenge a student to take a stance that would not inherently be part of their initial perspective on the issue, especially mm -hmm. considering that, you know, the tainted different media outlets that, you know, you have to kind of wade your way through. So I, I found this really interesting and compelling and I, I really appreciated the um, language use and that it was suggestive that I had the intelligence to make the decision based on factual information. So. Hmm. Yeah, I agree. I, I appreciate what you're saying, Nick. You kind of filled in what I was trying to think yeah. about. It reminds me of the point, Bob, you made a few meetings ago, which is like this 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 tool, AI, feels like a backboard at a tennis court. Mm -hmm. And um, if you encounter the text and you're tired and don't know how to assimilate it, this this thinking partner and the way it's presented information and the sort of way it's rhetorically invited me to think about different points of view to Nick's point kind of moved me along, um, it, which was helpful. It, it's a lot to digest. And to your, to Christina's talking about this would be good in college. I mean, it's really, this is a complex, horrendous topic and it's very nuanced and this thinking partner seemed to sort of take on the re-summarizing and repositioning and the invitation into it a little more transparently and carried the detail forward. Yeah. So I, I read this and I'm like, oh, huh, okay. I mean, I felt like my brain moved ahead a bit. Yeah, yeah. Well stated. Yeah. I, 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 um, Sorry, please. I'm, I, I quite like all of these. They're, they're, they 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 amaze me as as AI is prone to do. They also seem um, seem to represent a pretty uh, conventional wisdom, a, a pretty a pretty enlightened enlightened American coastal elite uh, kind of press. I mean, and yes, I think sir. one of the challenges that students would have, and one of the challenges for that matter that we have, is that is that unlike the positions in here that are pretty close together. We every day here, you know, Israel is a settler colonialist entity based on a based on a racist ideology created by Europeans to assuage their guilt over the Holocaust on the back of Palestinian self-determination. Or Palestinians are, you know, Hamas is a is a is a messianic Islamic fundamentalist entity that wants to re return to a caliphate and then and, and, and rule the world. And, and, and enslave non-Muslims. Uh, those are real opinions that they're going to hear every day, anywhere. Anywhere they go, they'll see those. Any, anywhere other than the New York Times and things. And, and I, don't, I wonder how this can help. I mean, I wonder if, if, if something like this actually might be helpful in metabolizing, like, in, in seeing those as extreme, as seeing those that aren't as, you know, this is condensing things in the middle in a way that, that feels pretty productive to me. So it would be interesting if what's on the left side were some of those polarized points of view, right? I don't yes, know if you were saying yes. that, but that might. Yeah, be no, that would that would be very interesting. And whether whether if it renorms to those norms to to the to the to, to the frame of those arguments and just evaluates those within that frame. Mm -hmm. In this case, it's evaluating the New York Times within a frame that's very sort of friendly to the New York Times. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good point. There are two more. <laughs> I want to get to them. They're a little more fun. I, I don't know, from an AI point of view. I don't know if, if I can say that. But um, this one is like a, a real mind um, turner. Um, Malik and Malik suggests that you can ask AI to be a student. So, 
Um, a very obvious example, and, and uh, there is a thinking partner that does this. You can tell AI that you are a th Is Paul breaking up for everybody else? I can't hear him. Yeah, I lost him. I thought it was me. He lost screen share too. He's kicked off. Yeah. Well, be, oh. um, in this uh, case, sorry, I'll slow uh, down. Uh, the questions are there? Yeah. We, Paul, Paul, we lost you. We lost oh. you for about thirty seconds. Oh no! What <laughs> I said was so great. No. Am I back? We lost. Yeah. You, you seem to be back. Okay. Sorry. We definitely and lost now. you for a period of time, though. Uh, what I was saying is that the next one is a, a, a using AI as a, a, a you are think, hearing me now, right? Yep. Yeah. Are you okay, sharing? Good. Paul, could you unshare yeah. and share again? Because it looks like yep. you're sharing, but I can't see it. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. We'll get to the last two here. So, <laughs> I just did that a little bit, bit up in there. Am I sharing again? Yes. yes. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, okay. Ninth grade. So, okay, let me just explain what this one is. Um, the big picture here is that it's using AI, using AI as a student, right? So you tell this, you tell AI what kind of student you want them to be. It then, you'll see what it does here. All right. In this case, I, I, one of the one of the ones I've tested is to. Um, give it a um, true false question mm -hmm. and ask to based on the text is this true is this statement true or false it'll say it's true or false it gets it pretty accurate um, and then it'll kind of explain but I'm not sure it'll be it'll act like a student right fair enough yeah. so in this case somebody this one's short enough maybe somebody could read this one um, I ask how do you think the USA should respond to this conflict it's sort of like an essay question to give to a ninth grader after having read this New York Times article. Is that all clear? <laughs> I say it's a little mind boggling to think no. about it this way. But yeah. Who would who would read this answer, this ninth grader answers for us? I'll take it if you like. Thank you. Uh, so as a ninth grader who really has no understanding of the world or anything about <laughs> I'm learning about conflict like these in social studies class. The situation you've described as complex and involves a lot of history and politics. I think it's important to remember that there are innocent people on both sides who are affected by the violence and that any resolution must aim to protect them. From what I understand, the USA usually supports Israel due to their longstanding alliance, but also critical to ensure that any uh, action respects the rights and lives of Palestinians who've also had a tough time. A diplomatic resolution would be best where both sides come to an agreement to the end of violence and address the root cause of the conflict. Mm -hmm. USA could support this by facilitating negotiations, perhaps. There are a few terms I don't quite understand, like Hamas, blockade, Palestinian militant group, and the Iron Dome missile defense system. Could you please explain these words? I'm really not, <laughs> I'm really interested in learning about the, this topic can we explore more about the history of Israel and Palestine in our next lesson? Sounds like a ninth grader. <laughs> very, eager, very eager ninth grader. Right. <laughs> wow. Thoughts great. about the value of this, sir? Yeah. Well, yeah I just, I, I just, I spoke with Paul last week, and he shared one from a. a I don't know. It was Paul? Do you remember that was the um, urban group of students? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was, and so I found it personally to be so enlightening because the language use was something that was so foreign to me, and I could imagine my students trying to read that aloud, and so I thought that was great. And you know, again, I'm from a suburban district outside New York City, uh, you know, and so pretty isolated, not diverse. And, and so I find these perspectives to be particularly engaging because it does, I think it does effectively encapsulate what a ninth grade student might think despite potential flaws, if that makes any sense. 
and I can't wait to see if if stu I mean, Christina, you pointed out that somebody from Rollins class last week used this, used the learner. So I, I logic, not logically, but hopefully, I think um, a a student who gives this prompt right to AI would then say, okay. I'm going to define these terms for you. This is what they mean. They would keep teaching the AI. And in, the idea is, and my, this is what Malik and Malik argue, the idea is that by teaching, we all learn, know that we learn a lot by teaching. So if we can teach AI stuff, um, you know, we're learning as well. Mm -hmm. I think it's a pretty profound idea to, to be messing with, but it's just like one of their seven categories. Jumping quickly to the seventh one, uh, maybe a little more familiar, but there were suggestions here tonight, and I thought of them too, of using other kinds of simulations. And in this case, the simulation would be, it is, what would a, what would a Marxist scholar have to say about this New York Times article, right? And then what we've, what we've so you can be reading that as I'm talking here. But what we've asked it to do is to keep keep the um, pontificating relatively short. You'll see it's just three paragraphs. And then to ask three questions that I might go back to the text with and to be thinking about. So maybe read through that, and then we can get to some larger conversation here. Let's um, give this one its due before we do the larger conversation. Any thoughts about what this Marxist is asking us to think about? Well, it's interesting. It, it does a very nice job of pinpointing sort of the principles and the vectors in a political point of view and putting them right out there. That summarizes it, you know, power dynamics and socioeconomic conditions and so forth as the prime as primary lenses to use in how you think about it and it doesn't go further to explain it but it kind of puts these big building blocks right out there which is i guess that's what it that's what it would do when you're asking for an interpretation i guess i was thinking about like just sorry just like looking at the prompt like these Marxist lens, right? They're developed as teaching, like that a kid could take it and use it on a text. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In this case, the AI is doing that translation work between the the frame, the Marxist framework, and the actual content of the article, and then it's so you get to start mm -hmm. with the questions themselves instead of having to do that analysis that may or may not be what you're really wanting to do at that time. Mm -hmm. You know, it might be that the getting to a question that then lets you do something with that question might be more to the point, I guess, is what I'm thinking. Interesting. I think it's important to, um, you know, as we look at a mall, and I looked at the, I think it's the, there was a third or the fourth one we looked at. It mm -hmm. basically, the inference was, and I really liked how it did that at the end, was that this is a wicked problem. There's, there's not a solution to this problem right now. Like we can't seem to figure it out yet. And um, and I think unless we were able to like really spend some time teaching our students about that, I'd be, I'd be somewhat afraid to jump into that last one for fear that it might become misinformation if they didn't understand that you're wrestling with something first. Mm -hmm. um, if, like if that was the first thing they saw, um, but I don't, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I'd say there seems to be kind of a scaffolding of these tools. And, and the fact that we started with the SIF, the first one we read, is definitely something that I would be, um, I think that would be an easier entry point 
um, you know, like let's test reliability. What does that mean? Um, yeah, for me, that'd be an easier. So the, 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 wanna, wanna state again that I would never dump all of this on students. I'm, I, I've even hesitated to dump all this on you tonight, right? <laughs> but at the same time, there's something interesting about how much more AI can do with these rhetorical different perspectives than chat GPT is doing, right? So I want to get that message out that like it can be a coach or a tutor or you know, it can do all these different things. Um, and I do think it pushes thinking. So anyway, those are some. Yeah. Things. And just one more word about pacing too. Like uh, the one day that I first launched uh, doing some stuff with the college application essay, I definitely was ambitious in how many uh, partners they engaged with. And so I realized on the spot, it's like, whoops, can't do, can't do all four of those today. But the way we present them is as a choice. And that is a possibility too. Like, you know, so that moment of I'm reading this article. So the other thing is you would want to, I think you don't want to use AI first. You would want to have kids interact with your article and, and mm -hmm. like the way, the way we watched Roland do um, and themselves and with each other and then say, Hey, why don't you see what a Marxist would say to that conversation you started? Right. So what, but understanding the possibilities feels like an interesting moment for mm -hmm. teachers and students to have. But I'm talking and I wanted you to talk, but yeah, go ahead. I, I, I like the point you're making, Paul, which is before you go to a teaching partner, you do some, you, you, you encounter the text and come to some idea of your own. You ask yourself a question. So you, you ingest a bunch of information, you sort out some questions that are fundamental to how you're gonna take your next step. And then you develop a rhetorical device, a springboard, you call it a teaching partner, maybe it exists, maybe you make it up, but you have some intention with what you're trying to solve for, which is different than just, you know, going and asking for some generic interpretation. So to the extent people are interfacing, talking, coming to terms with their own questions, and that becomes a means for them to then ask themselves a question and seek support, that feels like a really good move uh, in terms of thinking and in terms of getting your knowledge a little bit more down the road, as opposed to simply jumping in and grabbing one off the shelf, so to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the subject certainly um, invites or requires that, or what's the right verb? Do, you know, the chances for a better outcome seem much improved if you, if you encounter the subject a little bit more, and then you go ask, then you interrogate it. I, I just love that, Dave. I, honestly, that's exactly the, the issue I think you you like really narrowed down on that brilliantly because I, I think at least from my experience the students that I've encountered despite their diligence and, and their willingness to, to learn they do kind of grasp on to the most accessible and so if they did immediately go to AI they would pick one of those stances and, and embrace it without really vetting it through their own perspective. So I, I agree 100% with that. Yeah. It kind of I, this, you know, I'm, I'm not a teacher and this is just meant to be, it's not really meant to be provocative, but just to think about the other, like the strongest thing about all these, first of all, this is the most reasonable hour that I've spent talking about Israel, Palestine, Hamas in the last five <laughs> days. So that's kind of remarkable. Um, and I'm wondering like, like the fact that a, you know, some you know, you get an argument with someone, and someone says Iron Dome this, and someone says Iron Dome that, and Iron Dome, and you you have to have an opinion about Iron Dome, and you're going to yell at each other and bludgeon each other with your opinion about Iron Dome, and these these at various points brought brought forth three or four different perspectives on Iron Dome, none of which are like it's not like a yay or nay vote. It's 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 actually there's a multi dimensional way to think about these things, and and this. When you have a single text, you sort of maybe you have to think, well, do I agree with this or disagree with this? Yay or nay? If you have a 
thinking partners and, and, and sort of a polyvocal kind of kind of interrogation, then suddenly you're not in like a yay or nay pro or con world, but you're in a, oh, this is a wicked problem. This is a, this is a, um, you, 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 this isn't about me, a ninth grader. My, my, my chore here isn't to decide whether I'm, you know, Iron Dome pro or con support with three pieces of evidence, but rather it's to see, see the complexity and, and systemic dynamics in this and end up where the rest of us are, which is you know, our head in our hands. And, but I don't know, I think AI, I think the, the, the thinking partners we saw helped me stay in a place of not knowing, of, 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 of curiosity and not run to a place of what, 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 what fits my ideological universe and what should I you know, yell about. Yeah, I, it's a, I really appreciate what you're saying it. And also, Paul, to your point, you pulled off, I mean, you, when you saw the Moloch stuff, you immediately associated that collection of those lenses as a useful way to begin to filter and bucket things because you had this, there's this long list, but having the, the, the pace at which this thing can churn through perspectives and we as a group can sort of assess perspectives and feel disoriented, but intrigued and appreciation of the subject matter and its breadth sort of emerges as a result of that diversity, that diverse set of thinking partners in a way that wouldn't have if I just banged away at SIFT or gone after text as mentor or which, you know, I just stayed with one of those and kind of pushed and pushed at it and kept interrogating through that one. So that was very helpful. Very helpful. Yes. The one thing I was, I was just wondering about, um, I was sort of curious what Chris and Paul thought about um, like a text set, uh, like a C3W3 style text set that already has like multiple, um, is organized with multiple perspectives deliberately as a text set. And then taking these great idea. Yeah. Yeah. the text set would be really interesting. If you use the same thinking partner with different kinds of texts, it'd be different. Yeah. Yeah. And ones that have been, we have a bunch that are curated already. So it'd be interesting to try that. Mm -hmm. And I do want to say that one of the, one of the things about the Moloch and Moloch categories, and if these fit, is it's my hope that we'll say, oh, that's what that thinking partner is trying to do. It's trying to be a tutor. I think I can write a better prompt that really makes it a tutor. Like it. Like we can look at the examples I gave here and say, you know, let's not do a Marxist, let's do a Palestinian, you know. So thinking about better thinking partners with these categories in mind, I think is a very useful thing. The idea that teachers could get together and do just what you're saying, Paul, and come to rely on their own crafted thinking partners as a way to prompt students into something feels very, very productive. Pretty time consuming, gotta say that. Very, yeah. very much yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah. But in theory, yeah. two days were spent doing it at a back to school PD that was dedicated to it. And then a teacher could iterate on it through the school year and it would be mm -hmm. quite a, an interesting exercise. And yeah. Cool, cool. Moloch's at Penn, that's interesting. Yeah, he yeah. is at Wharton School. And Both I, I, it is his wife, yeah. yeah. Yeah, is one of them a GSE? I think they're both at work. Yeah, they're both at work. Yeah. yeah, and 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 David, you pointed out on on the studio that um, they have a, a really quite wonderful video series out yeah, recently, and, and some other things as well. Yeah. So yeah, you can watch them. Do you? You can, as opposed to reading it, they can explain each of their collection. That that article you're talking about, Paul, they turned into a video series. Yeah, it's very user friendly. Yeah. It is. I started just watching it recently, so I, I think I love us leaning leaning into this. I still wonder whether we're better off using student or our own text as the in the left pane instead of you know third party sources like news articles, because I just kind of I feeling is that that's what their model is really centered on using with these seven approaches, AI to react to the student mm -hmm. work product, not some other article and in and somehow connecting it to the student. But but let's let's ex let's kind of explore all the possibilities because I think it's a great framework to continue. Yeah, yeah. I mean I, I, and what what I love is when when it can do both. 
like when you can see what it does to an article and then see what it does to your writing, <laughs> that that's there's an interesting clicking that happens there. And, but yes. And to yeah. Bob's point in both years is if, if a student does an initial draft and references two citations, having that primary text that the student generates and then calling out at some point in the in the interrogation wrong verb there wrong word but in the sequence let's look at what the, the primary text was and then sort of see where it is there's a there's some gap there and there's some interpretive stuff that could be very interesting mm -hmm. to be able to consider with the primary text right front and center and a secondary lens on the supporting citations yeah lots of great ideas we're going to continue um i i would love to continue with the simulation trying to think i i so I, I want I want to see what Martin Buber has to say about uh, all every so, th so those ideas are great and so we should keep thinking about that. Also, teaching AI I think is a such an interesting idea to be playing with. So those are some of the places I'm going to go, and I hope you go somewhere, and we'll meet you back here. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> you. Thank you. Thank you. This has been so Thank Thank you so much. Huh. Good night. Thanks everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night.